Because if, if I saw the ceremony before I actually went in and said, what? Yeah, you is probably happening? wouldn't have done it. I, I think I would have went, I need to think about this. Yeah. This is a little bit too much. I need to think about what it is I'm doing when I'm doing these. Oh, God, chants, hear the words, the words from my, my mouth. mouth. It reminded me of kind of like a secret society in the night doing these. It is a secret society. Well, it is. But that's what it is with the lights on. <laughs> So, that's so true. I mean, yeah, all these people all in these outfits that we visualize in darkness with cloaks and yeah. it's white. It's white. And beautifully bright. But because I went in there with all these people that I love and other people that I would admire and I thought, well, they believe in this. Mm -hmm. I, what is it I'm not getting? Hey, my name is Shalise Ansola, and this is Cults to Consciousness, where we discuss leaving high demand religions or organizations and finding healing and independence through awareness and true individual sovereignty. If you're only listening and you want to see our faces, you could go to our YouTube channel at Cults to Consciousness, where you can join in on the conversation. It really helps becoming an advocate, a supporter of these people coming on and sharing their stories. It boosts the algorithm and it helps our channel grow to reach more people and spread more awareness and advocacy. So thank you so much for doing that, guys. Remember, our guests always read the comments. Um, so today's guest, we've had her on before. She was our first video to really pop off. And I've been trying to get her back on since. And I finally convinced her because she's in town for my baby shower. So thanks for joining us, Mom. Hey. <laughs> Hi, everyone. You can call her Lisa or Mama Bear, either <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah, so we went live a few days ago. I don't know when we're going to release this, but we wanted to get this done while she was was in town now that we're in the studio together. So today we're talking about mainstream Mormonism within the temple. So it's very secretive. It's sacred to some. Uh, we're going to be talking about what goes on in the temple, her feelings around it, her experiences with it. Remember, guys, we're not historians on this channel. Mm -hmm. We just talk about what we know, what we were taught, what we experienced. Things may have changed and shifted over time because we both left um, quite a few years ago now. But I still think it's important to talk about our previous experiences because ultimately it shapes who we are today. And it also helps inform how the older generations are still thinking about their temple experience. At least that's what I think. Do you think that's true? Correct. So the temple, it's not something that you go to. I guess I'll just give like a brief explanation and then we can get okay. into your story and jump into if you want to add stuff. Okay. So the temple, this is not something that everyone can go to every Sunday. It's something that you have to be worthy enough to go. You have to go to the bishop for a worthiness interview. He asks a lot of questions and we'll get into what those are in a minute. And if he deems you worthy, he will give you a temple recommend. And it's an actual physical card that they scan at the door. And it wasn't always a scan. It used to be like writing, mm -hmm. right? So they scan it and then let you know if you can go in or not. You go to the temple when, for women, it's usually when you get married or if you're old enough, like past 30 and they're like, she's not going to get married because that's old to them. Then they're like, okay, fine. You can go through, right? Or right. if you, or go, on if you go on a mission. Yeah. So for men, usually they go on a mission and then they would go to the temple before they go on a mission. And then afterwards, you just continue to go or they tell you to continue to go as much as possible. They tell you... It's your number one goal within the church being a Mormon is going to the temple, but there's all these requirements in order to get there. So I personally never went and did what they call endowments or the endowment ceremony because I left when I was around 19 or 20 and I wasn't married and there wouldn't have been a reason for me to go because I didn't go on a mission, but I did do baptisms for the dead. So I'm going to talk about my experience there. And then once you get in there, you're doing... Mostly after you go once for yourself, you do proxy work for people who have passed on. Correct. Right. I did baptisms for the dead. My mom would go and do temple work for those who had passed. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that they need someone physically on earth in order to do the ceremony for them so they can choose to accept it or deny it in the afterlife. Right. Right. Okay. So temple work. So it's very different. Not anyone can go in. Even as a Mormon, I couldn't just walk in and be like, I want to see the temple. It's very restricted. I went for baptisms. I went when my half-sister was sealed to us when I was, what, like 12 or 13 mm -hmm. or something? And that was my only peek into the 
ritualistic side of things with everyone in their outfits, which we'll talk about. And I was very limited to what I could see. So I was accompanied at all times and there it was like, you could only go in this room and you can only go in that room. So everything is very sealed off unless you have special permissions to do that. Okay, so I feel like that's a good explanation. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think so anyway. Let's talk about your experience, Ma, because you were a very devout Mormon yes, and you was. raised us very devout. Mm -hmm. And we've talked a little bit about your previous relationships, but for those who are just joining, because this was like a year ago that we had Mom on, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'd like to talk about how you were wanting to get married in the temple, like your thoughts around that and how they were kind of preventing you from doing so because of the person you wanted to marry. Oh, correct. So yeah. if I start with the very beginning, it was basically, um, I was 19, and I, uh, the man that I was dating at the time was not LDS, mm -hmm. and great guy, and I, of course, wanted to go through the temple because all of my friends had already been married and at 18 <laughs> and I was like I'm an old maid I've got to get married I've got to do this and so when I we decided to get married after only three months uh, we got engaged and we were going to go through the temple so I went and talked to my bishop and I basically told him about this guy and he said oh no you you shouldn't marry him and I said why and he was because he's not you know he's not a member and I so I'm like, well, what do I do? And he goes, no, you need to find somebody else to go take you through the temple. Was but this after he had already proposed? We had talked about getting married, yes. Okay. And so, yeah, we knew we were going to get married. But I went and then went back to him and said, I'm not supposed to marry you. He said, I'm not supposed to marry you. And he's like, what? And I go, yeah, because you're not a member of the church. And he said, okay, I'll become a member of the church. I mean, it was just kind of like, and I'm like, oh, no, you can't do that because that that would be you becoming a member for the wrong reasons. You need to you need to know that you want to be a member of the church. Yeah. So I went back to my bishop and I just said, I'm getting married to him. I'm wow. not going to force him. So rebellious, guys. <laughs> I And I'm not a rebellious person. <laughs> She's not, which I wanted to ask real quick because I remember when I was growing up, there was never, there was a heavy emphasis on flirt to convert. Like, okay, if you have to date someone who's not Mormon, at least convert them. But I don't remember them outright saying you can't marry people who weren't members. Was the focus different when you were growing up? Um, yes, um, you were expected to. And I did flirt to convert. Um, <laughs> a, a guy that I went with to was dating in high school. Um, I actually really liked this guy. And I talked I knew I, I got to teach him about the church because we're going to become married and uh -huh. this whole thing. And he ended up converting, became a bishop later in life. No and, way. <laughs> yeah. And, and hopefully he's doing great. And I think that's great. If, and if he's still in the church, that's fine. That's, you know, but I felt bad because then I leave the church and then I'm like, oh, what have I yeah. done? Interesting. Yeah. So anyway. So he converted. Yeah, he converted, and we broke up. But no, I but mean, the, the oh, guy you married. Oh, the guy I married. Going back to that <laughs> one. Okay, no, he did not. No, he didn't get no, baptized. No, no, no. Okay, we got married civilly, and then we were married for um, seven years, and then we, you know, we were just young, obviously young, and I had my my two sons, which now he's a great guy, and him, his new wife, and their children were all wonderful friends with. And so it's great. But. Okay. So I wondered what it was like for you mentally and emotionally when you realized you couldn't get married in the temple, because that is a huge focus. I remember them focusing on it so heavy with us yeah. in our classes of that is the goal. And I remember asking a very specific mm -hmm. lesson. I remember raising my hand and be like, what if I don't want to get married in the temple? What if I want a big wedding? If you guys have seen my wedding, you kind of know my my style. And <laughs> she was like, yeah, you could, but you'll regret it. Or mm. you could, but that's not what God wants you to do. So you're really kind of forced into getting married in the temple. And I also want to talk about what it's like to get married in the temple a little bit later because you actually went through and got sealed mm. and it was a whole mm -hmm. thing. Because it's very different from a regular wedding in the way that the verbiage goes and what you wear and all of that, which we'll get to in a minute. Right. But I wondered what it was like for you knowing that you didn't do the thing that you were supposed to do. I felt guilt. Um, I felt sadness that I couldn't go through the temple. I felt like I knew that that's what I had 
you know, been taught growing up that that's mm -hmm. the ultimate goal is to have your family sealed to you for time and all eternity. And I wanted that. And but I always just felt like he would eventually join the church and and we would get married in the temple. And that just it just didn't happen. And and it, it just wasn't meant to be. But when we divorced is when then I ended up meeting your father mm -hmm. and wanting to go through the temple and he had wanted to go through the temple but we had to you know do everything you had to do as far as living worthy and 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 so what we ended up doing is just getting married and then we decided we'd go through the temple a year later yeah because yeah. that was the rule that you, had you have to, to wait in a my year. time you had to wait a year i don't know what it is now and we I'm just sure your viewers know that we just looked it up i think it was 2019 that they changed it and said that you no longer have to wait a year if you get married civilly before you can get married in the temple. And then they said special cases are made if the parents cannot attend their children's wedding, which I think is great because it causes so much issue. And we'll get into that, too. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot to talk about. So you end up with dad and then. Let's briefly go over what are some of the rules that you have to follow? What's in the worthiness interview so people know what it takes to be worthy to go to the temple? To go to the temple, you have to attend all of your meetings. You um, are required to pay your tithing, uh, which is 10% of, of your, your income. income. Basically, some of the questions that they ask you are, are you affiliated with anyone outside of the church? The, are you involved with any study groups uh, that are not, you know, that are not within the church? Um, there were a lot. It's it's it was different back then. I think it was more strict. Word of wisdom, definitely. You know, no coffee, no uh, pop, no you know the caffeine, anything like pop, meaning caffeinated drinks. So we had to go through no alcohol. No, oh no, no definitely smoking. no alcohol, no, no smoking, drugs. no drugs, all of that. Um, and so when you go in, they ask you all those questions. And I don't know if we want to bring that up again or... Yeah, let's talk about that, the worthiness interview yeah. to get a renewal, yeah. your Temple Recommend yeah. renewed. I had had a major back surgery in 2007. And so being on pain medicine, it was hard because your digestive system is not good. And, and so I was told by my doctor, you just need to drink coffee and that will help. And it did. And so when I went in for my interview... Um, my bishop said, are you obeying the word of wisdom? And I said, yeah, but I, I drink coffee, you know, and he said, oh, no, no, you, you can't have coffee. And I said, but my doctor told me that that's really, that's what I need to, you know, to help me. And he said, no, I, well, I can't give you your recommend. And so I reached down in my purse and I pull out my, my pain meds. Hard prescription drugs. <laughs> and I sat on the counter and I said, but it's okay to have these. And he goes, oh, yeah, because their doctor prescribed. And I says, well, my doctor told me I could have coffee. And he, I said, so what – I mean, the comparison here is coffee versus these. You know, mm -hmm. what – you're, I can take all of these. I can take as many as I want. It doesn't matter. There's no restriction. Highly addictive. Yeah. And I says, but I can't have just a cup of coffee. And so he sat there for a minute and he goes, all right, well, okay, but don't, don't tell anyone. <laughs> and, then, and then I'm kind of like – Okay, wait, you're sitting there and you're supposed to be in proxy for God yeah. because God's speaking to you and you're now letting me slide. Yeah. But what about the person before me or after me that came in? And what if they didn't confront you in this way mm -hmm. or say something or give an argument? They walk out without their temper recommend. So it made me feel, I felt bad for that. But I felt like I had, you know, the golden ticket and the golden ticket was it got me in the door and I always... I felt like it was fire insurance, kind of like if, boy, if something happened, a catastrophe, I knew I had the recommend that I could go to the temple and they'd let me in for safety. Um, but mm. if I didn't, I was always I was always told that that would be our place to go. And we would oh, go the there temple? as a, a a place that you knew you could get in. And I don't know what how the temple's built as far as if they have underground, if they have, you know, kind of like a fortress or whatever. But I always knew that if that was the place that we were called to go to, I had the ticket. So oh, I could go. I never so, thought about that so, in natural disasters. Mm -hmm. Fire insurance that you felt. So, wait, so you would go without me? Because <laughs> I don't have a recommend. Well, I know, and that's what's that's what's what so about hard. the children? <laughs> that's what's so hard is because when your children grow up and if they're not in the church or not worthy in the sense of what the church says worthy, mm -hmm. then you felt like, oh my gosh, what about my kids? How am I gonna? Oh, because they even we left out a big one, which is the purity 
questions, the chastity questions. Oh, so well, even oh, within yeah. marriage, oh yeah, I there mean, are rules around sex. Like you can't masturbate. He never asked me that in those days. I knew that you could not have oral sex um, at that oh, time. That was a thing in your that right, was a thing in my married, in my time. That they got rid of in uh-huh. the eighties. Yeah, I'm. 90s? I'm not sure when. I just remember my girlfriend and I talked about this in the previous that my girlfriend had been married, but she had had was having oral sex with her husband and they would not give her a temple recommend. Yeah. Until she went a year without it. And I said, that's a year oh with your husband that you've been doing this and now you you have to just stop. Yeah. You know, that I felt so bad for her. So but that was the way it was back then. And again, as you viewers, I mean things have changed so much since I went and I'm sure many of you can relate to this. And yeah. maybe it's even changed even more from, I know, my mom's era. Yeah. Of, and I know that the the garments were here and they were here. The garments and are the clothes you have here. to wear under your oh, clothes yes. to yes. stay modest. And it's part of the temple ritual stuff, yeah. too. But, yeah, they've been changing. I oh, remember seeing you and your garments. They were like the super long to your knee almost. I would wear the long ones to my ankles, too. Oh, you would? Oh, yeah. I would wear the long ones. Oh, that's right. And then in the summertime, if we wore shorts, but you had to be below the knee, I would have the other ones. And I'd be dying of heat at ball games. I was dying. <laughs> it was awful. And But I wore them. And, but then now they've gotten shorter. Yeah, the sleeves, the sleeves have are gotten a lot shorter. shorter. The neckline has now cut Lower. into a V, where before it was straight across. It's, uh-huh. it's changed a lot. And, and I'm prob- I'm, it's probably still changing. Yeah, because we more. left... 12-ish years ago. Yeah, it's been So it's a been a while. Okay, so that's the worthiness interview. Was there ever a time when they denied you a temple recommend? Uh, no, no. I just was not able to get my garments the one time because my temple recommend expired. Right. And they humiliated me in the store. Yeah, we and talked about that yeah, on the previous yeah, one so. where she went in to just get new underwear because you have to buy them from the church. You can't just you don't wear regular underwear under the garments. Yeah. They are your underwear and you have to wear your bra on top, which I always kind of laughed at. Um, <laughs> and I wanted new funny. ones. I want. I like new and I like yeah. clean and soft and well, I don't like them being worn out. So I went to get new and my it had just barely expired. And they said, oh, no, 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 you're, you're, it's expired. <laughs> and I'm going, I know, but it's just barely, it's just, and they're, they would not give, and I was so humiliated because there was all these people in line. I was so humiliated. I walked in the car, got back in the car and just started bawling. Yeah, I remember I, I was in the bawling. car. I was like, yeah. what happened? Yeah, it was bad. There were but, people and, in the comments from the last one saying everyone has varying experiences. I think it would depend on the employees, depend yeah. on mm-hmm. part of the world you're yeah. in. There, I'm sure there's a lot of different factors, yeah. but definitely happened to her where she couldn't buy underwear because she wasn't technically worthy on a piece of paper. So let's get into the actual temple ceremony then whenever you're comfortable talking about and we can go into what that's like. Okay. Well, first of all, let me say this. I took it serious. Mm -hmm. It meant a lot to me. I really respected it. I honored it. I I lived it to a, I mean, to a T. And so for me to go to the temple in such a busy lifestyle, I knew, I begged God to just watch over my family when I went to the temple because I knew I was going to be in the temple for that two hours or whatever. And please watch my kids because I didn't have phone service. I couldn't talk to anybody. So when I went in, I, I really took it serious. And basically when you first go in for your, when I got married, and they give you uh, your own name. I thought it was my name only and nobody would have that name. I didn't realize that the name I was given was the name that they give everybody that day that for day. the women. I didn't yeah, realize that. I remember them talking about getting your new name mm-hmm. and they were telling us that it's like your heavenly name, your actual mm-hmm. God-given name. It's what like your soul name. And I remember being so excited to find out what my real name was and then... I found out later as an ex-Mormon that it, everyone gets the same one, depending yeah. on what day you go. And and you're not to tell anyone your name. The only yeah. one that knows your name is your husband, because he's the one that will bring you through the veil, because he will pass through the veil in heaven before you. He will reach through and bring you through by using your name. Doesn't he, like, call out your name or something? He ha- yeah, he has. And you have to do the, the proper symbols, handshakes, tokens, all of that. You have to do that in yeah. order to go through the veil. 
but only your husband. So he knew my name, but I was not allowed to know his name. So. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Let's talk about the first time you went through. The first time I went through, I went through the Salt Lake Temple, which is live. They do a live. It's not a so video. So explain what's live. It's not a, a movie. You have actual actors that play the part of Elohim, Michael, Satan, Satan Adam all of, and Eve. Yes. And so you, I, I remember sitting there and I was like on the front row because I was getting married and I'm watching these people like five feet from me and I was like, oh. <laughs> and I would lean over to my mom and I'd go, well, I don't understand this. And she'd go, don't, you can't talk, don't talk. And I'm okay. <laughs> so I was trying to just take in everything, everything that they said, every word, syllable. I mean, I was like, hang on to this because I need to know this. Yeah. And so let's go through it start to finish. Like if you've never gone to the temple, you walk in, what do you do? Okay. For me, basically I walked in and this is, let me just say, this is really difficult for me to talk about. And I know those of you that have gone through the temple and are now, um, have left the church, you still feel that anxiety, fear of yeah. speaking about it because you're not allowed to speak about what goes on in the temple because you're better off basically dead to, than to speak about it. You will, that is one of the biggest sins. That was something that was taken out before you left. Yes. It was like an about actual the sl cut, slitting of the I'll throat. I'll slit my throat or and cut out my bowels mm -hmm. if I reveal the secrets mm -hmm. of the temple. Yeah. And they removed that part previous to you going. Correct. So that's where that comes from, just so people know it's yeah. not just something that people feel weird about. It was actually part of the temple ceremony. Now the stomach is to do with nourishment to the body and mm. where it. So, and again, you you don't know what's going on. And so when they go, you go in and you have your name and you first sit down and then they, they will stand up and say, if there's anyone here that has forgotten your name, now is the time to get up and walk out. And this is the name that they gave you as the person you are being proxy yes. for, not your specific name, right? Uh, both times, both times, both times when okay. I had my own name and also when after I would go in to do endowment sessions for other people. When I went through the first time, I was just so confused of what is happening here. I, I, I didn't understand it. You're standing, you're sitting, you're taking off your shoes, you're switching your- Can you explain the clothes? Uh, yeah, they have a like a, a, a sheer sash and it goes across the front and the back. And then you have a green apron that represents the- Fig leaves Adam, of uh -huh, Adam for, and Eve. Yeah, for Adam and Eve. You have the veil that's on your head. If you're a woman. If you're a woman. And it's like a baker's hat almost if if you're a man. That's because I kind of laughed. I would look across at the guys and go, they look like bakers. They look pretty silly. <laughs> I, I did experience that when I went in for the ceiling. I was like, what in the world? Everyone yeah. looks so weird. And everything's all white except for the, the, green apron. the green apron. And you have to even wear little white stockings, right? And little uh -huh. slippers. Uh -huh. That you can take on and off. The slippers you take on and off in between the ceremony for me it was live so they would stop um if you're down when i would go into other temples it was a movie a actual movie you're watching which was really nice and then they'd stop it and you you would have to stand up and do the signs and the symbols and they get the tokens and it's hard i know I don't want to say it wrong. So there were so many different signs and symbols and one being your first given name and you would have to do the sign and then you would receive this token. You would do kind of, let me see your hand. You would do, <laughs> and I feel this is hard because I feel like I'm feel not a being little weird. doing right. And that would, in between the knuckle, that would be one sign or token. And then they would say, and this is for your given name. And I know you can get so much more educated on from, you know, studying it more yeah, than me if, telling it. If you want to see actual footage, guys, new name Noah, mm -hmm. he had an actual camera. He secretly recorded these temple ceremonies. So you can go over to his page and actually watch the footage. But essentially, and tell me if I get this right. So you go into the temple after they scan you in and you're worthy. You go into a locker, you put all your stuff away, all your phone, everything. You completely strip down and then you put on your temple clothes. Everyone looks the same. You go into a room, you watch the live performance rendition of the Adam and Eve story mm -hmm. of partaking of the, the evil fruit, fruit. <laughs> the forbidden uh -huh. fruit of knowledge and good and evil, right? And then 
after that, or in between, it's kind of interactive where you stand up and you do things and you switch your sash. And then there's some sort of prayer circle where you chant some things mm -hmm. and do more signs and symbols mm -hmm. and handshakes. And then is that when you go to the celestial veil? After that is when you go through the veil. And it lasts about an hour and a half to two, close to two hours almost by the time you do all of these things. Uh -huh. And I, maybe they've shortened it now. I don't, again, you probably, there's, you know, more people would know that. I do remember one time when I went with my friend and she had forgotten the name and she leans over to me and they said, Does, has anybody forgotten their name? If they do, they need to stand up and go outside and to get it. And, I, and she leans over and she said, I forgot the name and I knew it. And I wanted to tell her so bad. And I was like, but I, I'm not supposed to tell her. If I tell her, I'm going to, this is going to be, I'm going to be struck, you know? And so I looked at her and I go, what do I do? And she goes, you can't tell me. And so she got up and walked out. Everybody watched her walk out. And then she comes back in humiliated because everyone knew, oh, you forgot, mm -hmm. you know, you couldn't remember it that long. I mean, it just, I felt so bad when I wish so bad I could have just, and then came back and just told her, but Anyway, that something that strikes me with that is it's so simple, yet she was feeling so much guilt and shame over something so simple where why couldn't the guy have stood up and been like, OK, guys, if you forgot, if you're female, mm -hmm. your name is Hannah. And if you're male, your name is John. Yeah. Now let's proceed. Like, why does it have to be so secretive? And like, yeah. it's just interesting that yeah. they would in a place that. <laughs> guilt and shame don't need to be, they continue to perpetuate that in the temple when you get there yeah. in, a, in a space that's supposed to be to get closer to yeah. God, you're just feeling more anxiety because another thing I wanted to talk about is how they don't prep you for any of this. No. There's a temple prep course, but they don't tell no. you any of this. No. So by the time you get there and you've been working years, your entire life, your ho the whole goal as a Mormon is to get to the temple because if you can get to the temple, that means you're going to the highest level of heaven. Mm -hmm. So this is, there's high stakes here, guys. It's not just something that, oh, let's go do it for funsies or you want to go to the, it's very much part of your goal, your mission in life, if you're a Mormon, if you're a faithful, true believing Mormon. Mm -hmm. And so when you get there, I feel like they don't tell you on purpose so that you're just kind of like, oh, is this what we're doing? And you can't talk mm -hmm. to each other. So you don't ask questions. You don't lean over and be like, what is this? What's going on? Mm -hmm. You were just conditioned to shut up and go back again. And so, and then when you get home, you can't talk about it. Yeah, you can't so, talk about the temple out of the temple. No. And so, my whole thing was okay, maybe if I go into the celestial room, I'll be able to, God will tell me, it'll come to me, the angels will speak to me, and I'll understand all these questions that I have of if the years, if the earth is only 6,000 years old and he says, is man found on the earth? Why does God have to ask if there's man on the earth? Is God? Doesn't he know this? And I'm trying to understand, maybe it's because. There were dinosaurs on the earth before him, before the earth. And so now we're redoing the earth with man. It So many things went through my mind. And so I would say, please just help me understand. And the more I went, I got to where I was memorizing every little thing. And I was getting the last thing to memorize, as you all know that have been there, was the at the veil. There's the one last part that they don't really tell you but one time. And that's the person on the other side of the veil, the final to bring you through. So it's like a sheer curtain with holes in it, right? And you like put slits in your it. hand through and, and then you put your hand on his shoulder, who the, it's always the man. And then he says, what is this? And speaks and you says it's the uh, second, the token for the, or the, for the second Melchizedek priesthood. And what, and he goes, is there a name? Yes, there is. And he goes, well, could you give it to me? I can't, for I have not yet received it. Then he tells you that. And then when he tells you that, then you say, then he says the question again. And then he says, can you give it to me? And you say, yes, I will through the veil. And that's when you speak. And there's maybe a paragraph that you have to know. Oh. And I don't, you know, I, I would probably mess it up if I tried to do it. Is that um, when you put your hand through the veil? And you put your, and you give him that last And you do the handshake statement. stuff? You've already done that. You did the handshake. You've already done the first things, the first sign of, you know, the new name, sign of the, sign of the sun, or the, you know, the symbol of the sun, meaning God, the, the, the sun. Mm -hmm. And then you do the, 
the final one to go through. It's like it's going to mess with my <laughs> mind trying to remember it. If I get going on it, then I'll remember. And I remember my goal was to get up there. and Because if you forget, there's somebody standing. There's a woman right next to you, and she's there to... And then you say that line, and then you look at her like, help me, in that. what's the next line? And then you say the next line, what's the next line? And so I was like, I'm going to learn this. So that when you finally get up there and you say it, you're like, I got it. I know. <laughs> now let me in. <laughs> okay. So you're a type A personality. That's where I get it from. I think you're very like, I'm going to take notes. I'm going to make lists. I'm going to have color coded binders. And so yeah. <laughs> I'm wondering with your personality, it would have been really frustrating for me to not be able to write anything down. Mm -hmm. It's like going in for a test that you didn't study mm -hmm. for. And the only way to pass the test is if you take the test over and over and over again and fail it over and over That's again. That's exactly what it is. That's a lot of anxiety. It's a lot and shame. Yeah. Again, now you're at the veil and you look at the lady, the older sweet lady, and you're like, you get through one line and you're like, oh, because there's no What's way. the next line? They don't give you a only, handbook no, of something with the, the only thing on time it, right? You, you say it as the, other per, the person on the other side of the veil. So you have to go back and back and back and back and back to the temple, which I did. Mm -hmm. Multiple times, multiple times would go back so that I finally could say it and feel like I did it. Mm -hmm. But it took a long time. And if you didn't know it, sometimes they'd look at you like, well, you obviously haven't been here very much, have you? Uh... And you're like, and oh, it was so hard because I wanted to... That was the ultimate goal. And so when you finally did it, you know, you were grateful. But, you you know, then you go in and you sit in the celestial room, which is beautiful. Because they pull you through the veil uh -huh, if you get you, it right. Mm -hmm. uh -huh, <laughs> if you get it right. With their help, you will get it right. Yeah. But you go in and then you sit in there and it's just beautiful. And you, you just look around and you see some people crying, some people smiling, some people just kind of daydreaming or doing whatever. And then you can stay there as long as you want. And then you get up, go back down to the locker room, change your clothes, and get back to your regular life. Mm -hmm. So the temple clothes, so everybody knows, you have to rent them or, or buy, buy them. Your, I, I had my own that I would, I had a temple garment bag that I would take into the temple with me that had all my stuff. So I would wash it at home and bring, you know, always have it new to wear. And so I would put it on long, long sleeves. I hate turtlenecks. <laughs> <laughs> and the one I had was like, like had ruffles uh -huh. like right here. And I would sit in there and I'd think I can only wear this for so long. Yeah. I'm going to lose it <laughs> because I have a hard time wearing turtlenecks. But um, yeah, it goes to the floor, sheer socks that go to the knee, yeah. you're, you're completely covered. I just found it interesting that a billion dollar corporation can't just lend you clothes. Like you have to pay for them. You have to pay to rent them? You have to pay to rent them and you have pay to, to pay to, to buy them. Mm -hmm. I mean, buying them, it makes sense to me yeah. to have your own set, but it doesn't make sense to me that you would have to rent the clothes in order to be in there. And to do work for other people. Yeah. You're, it's you're supposed going to, be service, to right? serve someone that has passed on once you have gone through for yourself. Now you go in proxy and for another person. And I remember taking that very serious. I would go in for someone and I'd look at their name and I'd see, it would tell you the year they were born and the year I think maybe it said the year they died to him. And I would go in and say her name was Sally. I would go, okay, Sally, this is for you. Here we go. We're going in for you. And so I really thought about that person and it was emotional. You felt, mm -hmm. so when you were in there, you're really doing this for that person. So to me, I took it really serious. And also another thing that we didn't talk about is uh, I would go in with my husband at the time and we would do marriages too. You would kneel across the altar and we would be sealed for time and all eternity for couples, one after Wait. the other, one after the other. Yeah. You would kneel there and he would say the quick little thing and I don't remember the words. Yeah. Do you remember what the ceremony's like? Can you describe it Just at kneeling all? on the altar, hands across, holding, and the officiant, the man would say, and I don't remember. And I'm sure you'll get the comments of everybody knowing it. They would just basically say something fairly quick to marry you. Kind mm -hmm. of like you take them. Is and, there you a know. kiss at the end? No, no, no. So it's not romantic no, at all. No, it's not romantic. It's just, and, and then you would go, okay, you're married. And then they'd do another one. Okay, you're married. Another one, you're married. And then you would get up and then maybe somebody else would come and do, do it for them too. And that was back in, and I don't know how they do it now. Interesting. So that was your endowments for that person. 
and then marriage and be sealed. Yeah. My experience was similar in the repetitive thing, which is the baptism. Mm -hmm. So you were getting married over and over Mm -hmm. and I was getting baptized. Mm -hmm. So I guess I could talk about that real quick. When I went, they would take the youth. So she was a leader. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she, she was the favorite leader, of oh, course. No, no. Everyone's like, yay, no. sister, no. sister half. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was her old last name. Um, right. I remember, and I'll just briefly mention this because I've talked about it before, where I almost wasn't worthy to go on a baptism trip. Mm. And I remember being so anxious because all my friends would know that I wasn't worthy if I and I would go. And your mother would my know. My mother would have known. <laughs> and I remember going in and talking to the bishop. I was so anxious. And it was just because I was like kissing my boyfriend on top of him or something. And I felt so guilty about it. And anyway, he said I was worthy because he was a cool bishop. <laughs> he was a cool bishop. Um, he was great. But I remember the first time, though, that I went, I was 12. That's when you start going when you're in young women's. They call you a young woman at 12. Up to 18. Which is also very interesting. Yeah. So they put you in this jumpsuit. It's kind of like... A really thin, denim crunchy, like a Dickies jumpsuit, yeah. right? Like a Dickies yeah. fabric. Yeah. And um, it would just zip all the way up. And I remember that they gave me white underwear to wear or something, or I brought some, I don't know. Yeah. And it was see-through <laughs> because you're getting wet. And I, I remember that at least when I was younger, they wouldn't let you wear a bra or they told me, no, you don't need a bra. And I was so self-conscious, not that I had boobs, but (laughs) I remember going into the font and it's gorgeous. You walk in and I was like up on this higher level. And then you walk down these stairs into this enormous round tub and they had oxen, oxen, like statues of oxen holding up four of them. Uh Right. There was probably I don't a know how many was there. around. Yeah, there was. Or maybe I thought it was 12. Oh, it probably was the, the 12 the apostles. Oxen for the 12 apostles. I could be wrong. Anyway, yeah. I remember there was like a bunch of weird statues holding it up. And then there's this huge wall, glass wall where people could watch you. And I was like, oh, my gosh. And mm-hmm. I was afraid I was going to do something wrong. Not that you can really mess up being dunked in a pool of water. But I remember them saying if a, even a toe pops up, it doesn't count. Or if a piece of hair doesn't go under all the mm-hmm. way, it doesn't count. So I was already anxious about that. So you go down, and then, do you remember the words, how it went? No, but you, you hold, and then they you have hold, to hold, hold their yeah, hand. Yeah, they hold their with, hand up. You plug uh-huh. your nose with one hand, and you hold on to their wrist or something and with another the hand. And they say the same the thing same over thing. and over. And, and they use the name of the person that you're mm-hmm. baptizing. And so many people would talk about their experience of feeling the spirits of the people mm-hmm. they're baptizing watching. And I wanted that so bad. Mm-hmm. Never happened for me. But... Yeah, I remember going down and coming back up and this thing would just suction to your chest (laughs) and I didn't have a bra. And I was like trying to, because, you know, purity culture, we've talked about this. There's so much shame around your body. Not that even if there wasn't shame around your body, you wouldn't feel self-conscious, but it was just extra. Yeah. Where I'm like, oh my gosh, and people are watching and they, they can see my boobs and I'm only 12. And so they dunk you, I don't know, like... 10, 20 times or something, and yeah. then you get out and the next person comes. But that was my experience with baptisms for the dead. And so you're doing yeah. bad, what? Yeah. Well, first date, <laughs> I got to say this. Okay, first date, when you said you were not not able to go to the bishop because you kissed, you, were, you weren't 12 when you kissed the boy. No, no, Okay, no. that was older. That's <laughs> why I was saying the first I'm time, like, I didn't I'm kiss like, a boy till I was 15 with so, your permission. So I'm like, oh my gosh. So I'm like, guys. she was not 12 when she kissed this boy <laughs> and couldn't go to the, yeah, no, okay. Yeah, the, I started going when I was very pure and innocent at 12 <laughs> and then around 15 or 16 is when I had to go talk to the yeah. bishop to see if I was worthy yeah. because you're not allowed to kiss boys until you're 16. It's kind of a rule, but it's like a loose rule. You're not going to get in trouble, really, but you're going to be shamed about it. Mm-hmm. And I, <laughs> I couldn't kiss a boy till I was 16. Yeah, this is like that such was a, my time. a random story. I'm not going to spend a lot of time <laughs> okay. on it. But I thought it was funny because I had finally gotten a boyfriend and I was 15. And all my other boyfriends, I was like, nope, can't kiss you. Sorry, even though I really <laughs> wanted to. And so I remember asking you about it. I was like... Um, I was like, he wants to kiss me, and I just, you know, I don't think I should. And you're like, well, if you want to kiss him, you should kiss him. And I was like, 
<laughs> what? Did you just give me permission to break the 16 rule? And then they did this whole thing where they're like, okay, tonight's the night you're going to kiss your boyfriend. And they met him at the door with gum and then kept going through the house. And my brother met him with mints. And by the time he got downstairs, he was like, you told your family. We had to have fun with it. We had to so have embarrassing. fun. Anyway, that's a side story. Okay, so back to the temple. Okay. Was there anything that we missed? I guess I'm wondering, because I never went, and because it was so propped up as far as the temple is so important and you have to go and it's amazing and God literally walks the halls and it's the most spiritual thing you can ever do. I was not imagining what you just described. I was imagining you go and maybe you do get to wander the halls and you get to pray and, and meditate and whatever. No, you're kind of guided. There's people that stand at each you know, turn, and they just smile. And oh, so even you can't go certain places. Oh no, no. From the time that you get your outfit on, your you know robes and all that, you walk up and and they'll be sitting there. And you'll they'll stand up and smile, and they're beautiful, wonderful older people. Just oh, they were so sweet, and they kind of like this is the way to the room because you once they fill up one room, then they'll fill up the next room for this the movies mm -hmm. the, for to see you know the service. I call it a service or the endowment uh, session. I wanted to wander because I kept thinking, I'm going to see Jesus down the hallways. <laughs> right. What if I do? Like you peek your head down I the just forbidden wanted... hallway and you see Jesus just Can you just imagine, like, though, how amazing by? that would be? It would oh, be great. Oh, my gosh. To see Jesus. What a great example. Um, but they did have a big, full-length mural of him. And you'd walk down. And I remember, and I think we talked about this before, I would walk down the hallway and I saw this picture of Christ. And his arms are outstretched. And mm -hmm. most of you know that of the famous picture. The traditional picture LDS one. Of his arms are open to you, like, come unto me. And I remember seeing that. And I thought, I've got this golden ticket and I can come into the temple and I can walk down that hall and see a picture of Christ and hopefully see Christ or feel of his spirit. And it's very, you know, peaceful in there because it's so quiet and just, you know, from the outside world. Yeah. And I remember thinking, how come everyone can't come in here? Mm -hmm. Why can't everyone come in here? And they'll say, well, yeah, you can. You can before it's dedicated. Yeah. And that's like an open house, like for an open house. You all walk through, but you can't go in the rooms, but you walk through, look in. Oh, there's a celestial. Oh, there's the, you know, where they do mm. this ceremonial service or whatever. But you can't go in and partake of anything. Yeah. And I remember thinking, why can't everyone come and enjoy this piece? And why? It just it doesn't well, make It still doesn't make sense to me. To I mean, me, it's yeah. because if regular people walked in and saw what you guys were up to, they'd be like, yeah, hard pass. I'm going to well, get out of here. <laughs> oh, yeah. If they saw the session. <laughs> if they saw the ceremonies. Because if, if I saw the ceremony before I actually went in and said, what Yeah, you is probably wouldn't have done it. I, I think I would have went, I need to think about this. Yeah. This is a little bit too much. I need to think about what it is I'm doing when I'm doing these Oh, God, chants, hear the words, the words from my, my mouth. mouth. I think I would be... Now, if I were to see it, I'd go, what are they doing? It reminded me of kind of like a secret society in the night doing these. It is a secret society. Well, it is. Yeah, but it's not in the night. It's bright. But I visualize dark and this big darkness and kind of scary stuff. But that's what it is with the lights on. <laughs> so That's so true. I mean, it's like if you guys think of a cult, just picture a, if I say the word cult, just think of a cult in your mind, but with all white instead of all black. Yeah, all <laughs> these people all in these outfits that we visualize in darkness with cloaks and yeah. it's white. It's white. Beautifully bright. So I think I would have had to went, I don't know what's going on. But because I went in there with all these people that I love and other people that I would admire and I thought, well, they believe in this. Mm -hmm. I, what is it I'm not getting? I got to keep coming. I got to keep going and going. Mm -hmm. And going and going and going and then I'll get it. And that's the thing too, because a lot of people say, "Well, if you went in the temple and it was so weird, why did you keep going?" It's the manipulation and the coercion and the guilting and the shaming, and it's your mission. And like you said, you look around the peer pressure. Well, he gets it. What's wrong with me? She gets it. What's wrong with me? They don't let you talk about it when you leave. At least that's what our experience mm -hmm. was. Maybe it's different from where you're from. So. You can't talk about it. You have no idea what you're getting yourself into. Everyone around you is doing it. And, and you think you're the oddball mm -hmm. out. And and that's how you get to the celestial kingdom. And that's how you get to the celestial kingdom. So you, you just go. do it. You just do it because you want you want that fire insurance. You want to know you 
can go to the celestial kingdom. Yeah. Outer darkness, outer darkness, that's not even a thing in your vocabulary when you're, you want, you're not Which even thinking like about the that. The Mormon hell. The version yeah, of the you're, Mormon hell. You're, you want, you don't want the terrestrial or the telestial. You want the celestial. Yeah. You want the beautiful mansion with the golden bricks and, I mean, you, the pastel. I mean, you can just visualize what heaven, I'm sure, is probably like. It's probably amazing. Whatever that is, I guess <laughs> we'll all find out, but. So they have yeah. all of these things in place to desensitize you to the weirdness because like you said if you would have seen the ceremony prior to going oh, wow. you would have been like hmm do i want to sacrifice all of these things do i want to wait a year and not give my husband oral sex so i can go there <laughs> like is it worth it to go so i can chant all of these things and do these handshakes people aren't informed about what they're getting themselves into and they sacrifice so much so that when they finally get there they're like well here we are like the sunk cost fallacy yeah. of I've spent so much time and effort to making it here. I'm not going to just walk away. I'm not going to stand yeah. up and say, you guys are crazy because it's that fear. It's that pressure. If you were to go back when I actually went back and watched this version of the Yeah, we person, watched it today. I, it brought it all back. And I started going, what does this have to do with Anything. going to heaven and... <laughs> What does this have to do, do with love and showing kindness to others? What does all of this have to do? The changing of the robe and the signs and the token. What? Won't, wouldn't God just, if you're a good person, know you're a good person and let you in to heaven? Mm -hmm. Why do you have to know the tokens, the signs, the symbols, all that? Why do you have to know that to go to heaven mm -hmm. if you're a truly good person? Mm -hmm. And that's where it really got to me when I was in in the temple too, thinking there's a lot of people that are not LDS that are wonderful, amazing people. Yeah. I don't think God's going to keep them out. Yeah. I don't. Well, and that's the thing too, is when you really start to analyze everything and you think if there really is a God who's all loving and all powerful and all knowing, why would he introduce this religion at this period of time where only a sliver of the population can mm -hmm. partake of it and only a sliver, sliver, sliver of that population can even go to the temple mm -hmm. or even worthy enough to go? Mm -hmm. It just seems like it's kind of cruel that a god would say, well, if you get to heaven, what's the handshakes? Well, I don't know them. Then I guess you're not coming in. Yeah. It just seems like a really bad plan for yeah. god and so and you also have to look at all the other religions that think that their ways oh, yeah, their rituals yeah. are the only way to get into heaven mm -hmm. everyone is feeling the mm -hmm. same thing and so you just have to analyze that when we were watching the video today i literally fell asleep I she like, did she reminded me this? of my grandma <laughs> because my grandma would go to the sessions with me and i would be i'd be like listening like i've got to learn everything memorized and i'd look over at my grandma and she's sound asleep <laughs> And then all of a sudden, when it was time to stand up and do a sign or a symbol or whatever, she, it was like, she just woke up like, and she'd stand up and do it. And then she'd sit back down and she'd be out again. <laughs> it was like, she knew exactly when to sleep and when, because she had been so many times, bless her heart. Oh, oh I love so much. Oh, yeah. She was amazing. But yeah, you, you went to sleep. It was extremely yeah. boring. Yeah. And I don't know, maybe they've updated the video and made it a little bit more exciting, but also just the language in there. It's just so sexist and it's just funny because when you went, you had to give your obedience to your husband mm -hmm. and your husband gave obedience mm -hmm. to God, mm -hmm. which they changed that. They've changed that from what I understand. They've changed it because women were like, why um, can't I just give my obedience to God? Mm -hmm. Why do I have to go through a man? But there's still the whole, you can't, Oscar's being a little fussy on my lap. Mm -hmm. You can't go through the veil of heaven without a worthy priesthood holder pulling you through. So you still need a man to get to heaven. And that's why a lot of people get divorced when there's faith crises yeah. because, or faith crises, who knows mm -hmm. in the plural, um, because if the man says, I don't believe anymore, the woman is like, well, how am I going to get into the highest mm -hmm. level of heaven if you're not a worthy quote yeah. worthy priesthood holder and so you get these divorces with mixed faith yeah, marriages it's, it's really sad but yeah, that's why true. it all comes down to your salvation the light at the end of the tunnel why you're sacrificing and doing yeah. all these things yeah it's pretty interesting and i know like with the second atonement and that's a whole other the second anointing and saying second anointing that's that's another oh, super super secret within where the, the super woman secret. does give a blessing to the man that's I right. did not I think know that. So. And that 
the brethren wash the men, the priesthood holder's feet, but then the woman goes in and washes her husband's feet again. She doesn't get her feet washed. She <laughs> washes his feet again and then gives him a blessing. So this is the, did you watch the one on John DeLynn's? Yeah, Mormon I was, stories? yes, that was so good. So watch for that. those who don't know, mm -hmm. this is something that even Mormons don't really know about. I didn't know that. Most people don't. I didn't. It's like super secret society and people in the comments may even try and say it's not true, but it's it actually is. true. So if you are very special, if you're high up in the church, maybe you have, maybe you're in the 70, maybe you're just a very powerful, influential person in the Mormon church, wealthy, and you're married and you're both worthy, you just randomly get a phone call. And they're like, come to the temple at this time when it's closed, when no one else is there. Mm -hmm. And it's called the second anointing. And after you do the rituals, it basically guarantees your spot in heaven unless you kill someone or... Deny the Holy Ghost. Oh, interesting. Those are the two things. And those are equal. Those are the two things. Yeah. So, yeah, you could sin and do whatever okay. and you're guaranteed a spot <laughs> in heaven. Yeah. And that's very, very secret. Another thing we didn't bring up is that, because people are probably also going to be like, it's masonry. We're very aware now that most of the handshakes mm -hmm. are directly, even some of the clothing. And if you look it up side by side, Freemasonry and the temple or Mormon temple rituals are almost identical because Joseph Smith, the founder and prophet of Mormonism, did join the Freemasons. Mm -hmm. And, and like a month or so later, he was like, I had a revelation about what should be the temple ceremonies. And he basically, and they were a lot different back then where you had to do, we didn't even talk about the naked poncho touching, which we can, but there were a lot of very sketchy things that went on in the early temple ceremony days that they don't do anymore. And they've changed and changed and changed over time because of people's comfort levels, of yeah. course. But I find it funny that Joseph Smith is like, this is a an everlasting covenant and it's never going to change and it's Changed quite a bit. So yeah. Tell us about the naked poncho touching. Oh, goodness. That was a long <laughs> time ago. I was 19. So, well, t no, no, I was I was older than that because I was married for the, my first. So when I went through the temple, I was in my 20s. So I went in and they put this poncho tent. It's kind of open on the sides. And you go into this little room where this there's a cute little lady. Completely naked underneath. Underneath, completely naked. And then she touches. And I don't even remember it because I was kind of like... And this is, it was a woman, a but I mortified. was still uncomfortable. Well, yeah. And they touch different parts of your body to with rep oil? With represent uh -huh, the different symbols or, and I don't remember even what they said. I was so, I was so, and you only do it one time because after that you don't do it again. You don't do it as proxy for no, anybody? No, no. You just do the, in de at least maybe they did. I never did it again. And you could choose because mm. no, I never did that part of it at all. And maybe you can. Help Let me us out know in here, the comments. Because I don't know what they do now. Yeah, but or it's even like... Then, I, 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 after doing it one time, I was like, I don't want to do that. I'm just uncomfortable with that. Makes sense. Yeah. It's an anointing ceremony. So they take special oil. anointed oil and touch like around your breasts, uh -huh. your navel, your navel and, and your pelvic area. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. they're not groping genitals. No, they're At not. least they're not supposed to. No. We've heard stories of people who have been assaulted but, in the yeah. temple, unfortunately. But that's something that they took mm -hmm. out and they don't do anymore. And I don't know how they, uncomfortable with I don't it. know how they do the anointing now. I don't Probably know. Probably just over the clothes. I think that's do what they? I heard okay. is over the clothes. We wanted to put this disclaimer because we're not we're not saying this is exactly what goes on now. Yeah. We just want to talk about our experiences and her experiences because also I think it provides context as to how it has changed. Mm -hmm. Because people now could say, Well, that's not how it is. Okay, but it's still important to recognize how it was and it, how it's changed. Yeah. And how it makes you feel. Yeah. People from my generation, I mean, I don't know how you felt when you went through. It's just how it made me feel. Mm -hmm. And and that's it's just my experience. And people that go through I have friends that are still in the church that go to the temple faithfully and I love them to to death. I love them and I honor them and if that's what makes them happy, that's great. And they accept me for who mm -hmm. I am too. And so those are your true friends. Yeah, we're not here to be disrespectful or to make fun of it. I know I giggle a lot because I just find it a little silly sometimes. But I'm not trying to be disrespectful. No. I'm not trying to say what you believe is wrong or stupid or whatever. I just want to provide context, let people know what did go on, 
how we feel about it, how it affected you, how it's affected me, and just yeah. really provide informed consent for people too. Because like you were saying, if you would have known what went on in the temple, maybe if you would have come across the video, it would things would have been a lot different. Mm -hmm. I would have least at least understood it more yeah. to say, why are they doing this? Give me an explanation. Why are they doing that? You know, help me understand yeah. it. So I may have taken it differently. I just went in with the feeling of I have to learn everything and memorize everything and maybe God will give me the answers. And honestly, I went so much and I didn't get I didn't get answers. I just got more questions. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I wish they could change it in a way to explain that. that. Yeah, really explained it to people before they went. So it's informed consent. Mm -hmm. Let them give them a hand handout. This is what you're going to have to memorize while you're in there. Yeah. So there's not so much anxiety. I don't know. I just feel like there's better ways to do things that would help people feel more at ease, not so anxious, not ashamed, and make it a beautiful experience yeah, because right. I'm sure it can be, and I'm sure it is for many people who don't feel that way. Mm -hmm. Everyone has a different temple experience. Some people talk about their temple marriage and they cried after. Some people are like, oh, it was beautiful. Other people are like, yeah, it was weird, but it was whatever. So everyone has their experiences. I think there's yeah. ways that they could make it better. So the last thing I wanted to talk about is when you left the church and you made the decision to take off your garments and then you called me to come out to me about leaving because you thought that I was still a member or that I was still mentally in because I was yeah. technically a member still. Yeah. So what was going through your mind when you called me to tell me that you were not going to church anymore? Help me remember exactly the words <laughs> I used, but I remember thinking, I've got to tell her that, you know, we've kind of left the church. And taking off the garments was not an easy thing. Mm -hmm. That was hard because they were your comfort. They, You felt that if you wore them, you were protected. They and told if, you that. Yes. Oh, yeah. And if you took them off, I'm going to get in an automobile accident or something's going to happen to me, and now I don't have my garments for protection. Mm -hmm. And so I was... It was really hard. I felt really naked for the first time of, from taking them off. But going to your question, when you call, when I called you, I was so worried that if she was still in and she was going to go get married in the temple, which I thought she was, mm -hmm. know, would go through, I, and I'm a rule follower, but I said, I will do whatever it takes to go through that temple. I will go through the temple. <laughs> I will I will answer the questions because I'm going through. Because I'm not funny. going to miss my daughter's wedding. Yeah. That I will lie. Because and that's you, awful because I'm not I'm such a rule follower, but and because you knew that I was heavily in. Like yeah. I was very mm -hmm. much involved in the church until I wasn't. Yeah. Thought you would hate me. Thought mm. you were gonna go, how could you leave the church? And but I Jeez. knew you were questioning, not questioning, you were trying to prove that the yeah. church was right. Yeah. I came to yeah. you with a lot of questions and said, help me answer these. And that's what sent you off on mm -hmm. your journey. On my own rabbit hole. Which, yeah, we talk a yeah. lot about in the very first episode we did, how I got my mom to leave Mormonism, which is <laughs> basically just a roundabout way of, I came to her with a lot of questions that she didn't know. And she started to ask. And then she started like, wait a second, what's, what is all this stuff? Yeah. So you can watch that episode if you want to. But I just learned today, though, that you meant that you would lie to go to the temple when you told when you told me I'll do whatever it takes to be there, I thought you meant that you would like put your garmies back on, stop drinking alcohol, or I don't even know if you were at the I wasn't, time, yeah, I wasn't. or stop drinking that horrible coffee, my coffee, so that you could be there. I didn't know that you were actually just gonna lie. <laughs> So well, funny. I would have worn my garments. I would have put the garments on. I would have. You would have. I would have. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I because <laughs> who as a mother. Who wants to miss their daughter's wedding? And well, now they've changed that. Yeah. They've changed it now to where that's not the case anymore. They allow they don't you let to them do in, a, they, but they allow you to do a civil a civil yeah ceremony first. Yeah, we were reading yeah. the website, and I should have had it pulled up, but it was funny. It said something like, "If in these very special cases." you your parents can't come to the wedding you can have a civil marriage first but what was the word but it has used? to be very what was the word well, not humble uh, it has to be very i'm yeah. gonna have to find it yeah. and maybe i'll put it on the screen or something but anyway i thought it was really funny that they said yeah you can get married outside of the temple in a very 
kind of modest setting yeah. and then you don't have to wait a year to go to the temple so that you're not excluding family members but and then in the next paragraph it was like but this is not to say that getting married in the temple is not important <laughs> this should be your priority that's your priority yeah and yeah. don't don't be confused they still can't come in and watch <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. at least they can be at a regular, quote, regular yeah. wedding yeah. first. Wow, so mom, yeah. you're going to lie for me? That's so sweet. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> See, I feel guilt. I feel guilt. It's still oh, with no. me. It's still instilled in oh, me that no. I have the guilt. Well, you dodged that bullet. <laughs> yes, I didn't have I to. I did not get married I, in the temple, guys. It was a beautiful wedding, though. It was a wonderful, elaborate, gorgeous <laughs> you wedding it was a it was people would say what is her wedding going what is her wedding going to be like and i said you know all the birthday parties that she used to have and they were pretty crazy growing up yeah i says this is the grand finale it is. and it's it was because you're, you're the party person you're the one that got me into themed parties theme parties so this was a themed doing wedding. crazy things and we have episodes on that guys we'll, we can link those or you can find them it's my not so mormon wedding and my old hollywood glamour not so yeah. mormon wedding or something yeah, that's great so you can see for yourself so what's your linda listen oh <laughs> i don't don't lie don't li- <laughs> linda listen don't lie be honest tell the truth <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's you don't have to I'm feel telling, guilty I'm anymore. telling everyone I would lie. Linda, because listen, I, leave the cult so you okay, don't have to lie. I know. That's, that's the best thing. That Leave the cult so you don't have to. I, <laughs> gosh. She feels guilty about saying that too. <laughs> I know. It's okay. That's horrible. <laughs> okay. How about this? Here's a positive spin. Okay. Linda, listen, do what feels right for you. Okay. Yes. Well, and you know, if you're not hurting someone yeah. else. My other Linda right. listens were be yourself. And choose just love. Be yourself. Choose love. Just be you. Yeah. And so I guess I was just saying I was just going to be to her wedding. But. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, here's another good Linda listen. Okay. Support your children. Yes. Yeah, support because your that's really important. Not everyone has um, a relationship like we do. Not everyone's lucky enough to have parents who have left and support them and are okay with big crazy weddings outside of the temple. There are some parents who shame their children or cut yeah. them off, or you know, it's or it's the really parents sad. Have been cut off. I've had people reach out to me since the episode we mm. did that have this one woman had said that she was so sad because she not could not go to her daughter's wedding. <gasps> Or they're just not invited to their kids' they, wedding they at, in any not, capacity. No, she not could even not the go, reception. I, because she was n- not a member anymore. Yeah, and that hurt my heart. I can't imagine. Yeah, that, I yeah. So, so then I, that's sad. Prioritize your family. Mm-hmm. I don't know. There's so many little nuggets. You I guys know. know. Yeah. So thanks for coming on, mom. It's always a good time. (laughs) We'll get you back on here soon. Guys, she's coming to Costa Rica with us. Come go. Come go to Costa Rica (laughs) with us. We're going to have fun. It's it's just going to be fun. Yeah. It's not going to be depressing or it's going to be uplifting and fun. Adventurous. Yes. It'll be a good time. So if you want to come, there's a few spots left. You can find the link in our description. If you want to connect with mom, you can find her Instagram. It's at Spirit of Otter Tail. We have Cherokee heritage. And so she makes Native American art that's really beautiful. In fact, the enormous dream catcher behind me on my other set, she made. (laughs) She's amazing. I love it. And what else? I think that's it. I appreciate you coming. Thanks for having me. Love you, Mom. Love you. (laughs) (laughs) So if you want to support the podcast, you can check out our merch on our website, coldstoconsciousness.com under the merch tab. It'll take you to our shop. We do have little onesies now (laughs) because I got the baby on the way. Uh And you have the best supporters. You have I know supporters. everyone's so amazing everyone's even if you so don't nice. buy the merch I think the merch is like cherry on top for me and yeah, I get excited yeah. when people buy things but I love reading the comments and oh, seeing yeah. how many people are just tuning in that's a really big deal so sharing the episodes is a huge way to support the podcast yeah. and if you want to become a patron you can do that too patreon.com slash cults consciousness and if you like this video I'll link two more down here below and until next time follow your highest excitement be conscious and be well <laughs>